Hey guys, Beat Reynolds, Chris Tomer here with this mountain weather update. My first stop is Snowbird, Utah, looking at about two feet out of the storm cycle. Today's a big powder day for the Wasatch. Look at that Alpenglow. That is spectacular. Clear skies, awesome to see. Uh, a big powder day. Let me take you up to Jackson Hole. So they're reporting another nine in the last 24 hours. That puts them at 19 inches for the last 48 hours. Love seeing this. Um, 122 at the summit for the season. Today will be a powder day up there at Jackson Hole. It'll be a dry day today. Your next shot of snow, one shot on Sunday, another shot of accumulating snow on Monday. So you've got snow coming starting tomorrow. This is Aspen Mountain caked in snow. So we had seven inches um, early yesterday morning. We added another seven to eight last night. So we're at about 15 over the last 24 to 36 hours today, I'm sure the skiing will be spectacular up there at uh, Aspen, Snowmass, and the Highlands. Let me take you into my bullet points and uh, talk about what I'm seeing now. So now that this storm is exiting Colorado, we're going to get into a pretty fast flow. The jet's going to flatten out, so whatever comes into the Pacific Northwest will quickly move across Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming with a little bit of that brushing the central and northern mountains of Colorado at times. But Wyoming and Idaho, Montana will probably get the most out of this pattern. East Coast storm system, we'll look at that 1210 and a 1211. It'll be a windy storm with a lot of rain initially. Um, we'll look at California snow chances. There might be something there at 1217 and 1218. All right, let me take you over to uh, water vapor satellite imagery. Here's the setup. There's our departing storm system right there. That's going to dive east and then northeast and become that windy storm system. Another storm here, another storm here. Both of these are smaller lows. They'll be faster in the flow coming up over the top, and they're going to move faster and be weaker. So they're uh, not going to be as big as this storm that uh, is exiting Colorado. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. So that's the view by this afternoon. Here comes that second storm out of the Pacific Northwest. You can see a, a little blob there of snow and blue for Idaho and Montana moving into the Tetons by the end, uh, midday into the afternoon tomorrow. And a little bit of that spills down into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Here's the view by Monday morning. Same type of flow coming out of the uh, basically north-northwest through Idaho, Montana, the Tetons, northern mountains of Colorado. So that's Monday morning in the afternoon right there. Same kind of thing. Continues on Tuesday morning. And then it rolls down through uh, Colorado there on Wednesday in the morning. And it may develop into a, a low there in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico. You can kind of see how that flares up um, in time. Um, and then by the time we get into uh, 12, 16, 17, 18, we may have a storm that kind of drops south into California. Long way out. All right, let's talk about the jet stream pattern. So this is the view by tomorrow late in the day. And so the big trough we had is gone. Now it's just really kind of a fast flow, escorting that moisture in through the northern tier. Looking way down the road by 1218, you can kind of see there's a little more undulation here. There may be a little bit of a dip coming out of California, moving through Utah and Colorado. So we'll watch that pattern for the extended. Here's my snowfall forecast uh, today through the 11th. Again, most of the accumulations in the northern tier, another foot or two up in the Washington State and uh, B.C. along the coast. Good snow through Idaho, um, some snow in through parts of Montana. Uh, the biggest stuff right there is going to be through the Tetons with, uh, you know, just waves of snow coming down the flow. A little bit of that spills into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Here's the second period, 1212 through 1215. Again, we may have that, uh, that low develops in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico with a little bit of snow. But overall, we're not looking at big accumulations during that period. And the final period, 1216 through 1218, again, low may come out of California after uh, dropping some accumulation rolling through Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. All right, let's talk about the Northeast. Here's the jet set up for 1210 late in the day. Again, puts the uh, the big ski areas of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine in the warm sector with rain initially. And then it will change over to snow. Here is uh, the radar forecast radar for late in the day on 1210, 10, 15 p.m. Again, all those big ski areas start as rain, but you can see the changeover line behind the cold front on the west side. That'll be sweeping through the resorts on very early 1211, changing it over to snow. So as far as accumulation goes here, my numbers... Um, through uh, 1218. Again, most of this happens though on 1211. Looking at about a foot through Stowe, Jay Peak, Mad River, and Sugarbush. Uh, New York State, 6 to 10 inches. 
a uh, fair amount possible possible on Mount Washington as well. But again, this is the track of the storm, not optimal putting most of the ski areas in rain initially. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this update. Always appreciate you tuning in here and take care.